There are rumors that Disneyland Paris will become the example for other Disney parks, such as Walt Disney World. Okay. How about that? Okay, and in what form? Well, you know, now that um, Bob uh, JPEG is uh, uh, yeah, moving away as CEO and Bob Iger will probably will take his place, um, people are, you know, talking about um, yeah, what the future will be of, uh, for example, Lightning Lane, the reservation system, such, uh, such things. And a lot of rumors are going around that they will probably implement the same system and rules and things that Disneyland Paris has been doing from the beginning actually. Okay, and uh, the beginning you mean as uh, from the beginning after the closing yes. uh, of, uh, of, of the, the whole film? Yeah, COVID. exactly, the whole Covid situation. Yeah. yeah. For anybody uh, who is watching us for the first time, we are Elisa and Sven. And we are currently recording a podcast for our patrons, but we thought that this could be also um, very interesting uh, topic for you guys on youtube to uh to hear because um yeah we're talking about the future of um the reservation systems and the future with with a new ceo and this is of course very exciting news yeah now in the past we always and speculation lots oh. of speculation that we're doing here of course <laughs> hopeful wishing that we uh get a better system in the in Disney World and yeah. Disneyland and other parks. Absolutely, because we haven't always been so positive about everything that is going on. In Disneyland Paris? In Disneyland Paris and um, of course we knew about the whole situation in Walt Disney World and that it was actually worse than we have in Disneyland Paris. But yeah. um, now it's really interesting to hear that some of the things that we are experiencing for a long time now are going to be implemented in the other Disney parks as well. Probably, because Probably. this is speculation. Speculation? Uh, I think it would be a good thing, because that would mean that um, you have the, the Express... No, no, it's not the Express. That's we have a uh, Lightning Lane in Walt Disney World, yeah. and in Disneyland Paris it's called Disney Premier Access. Yeah, if, that you would have uh, Premier Access in Disney World, because those are limited t tickets for a day, that are being sold and if you have a ticket then you're set and you're set for a few rides in the park so all yeah. the rides that used to have uh fast pass, pass. uh now are uh, disney premier access so yeah. you have the same um uh it's the same system as the fast pass but now you have to pay for it that's actually the whole deal yeah and you pay it um up front online or at the gate and then you have a a, a a whole day ticket for a limited and there are you can buy uh, per a ride so if you don't care about certain rides but you care about for example um, uh, Tower of Terror Hotel yeah uh, you can buy premier access for that specific ride but mm -hmm. you can also buy the whole package and that is for the rides in Disneyland and also in Walt Disney Studios Park mm -hmm. um, but uh, the thing is that many people were complaining about the fact that the price is pretty high for um, for the whole package. Yeah. And there are a limited amount of rides because there weren't a lot of fast pass rides. You have Big Thunder Mountain, for example, and um, if I am correct, Buzz Lightyear, yeah. uh, for example. But um, there aren't so many and you have to pay quite a lot of money. I will put all the details in the screen. So. Yeah, but that makes it's also an advantage if you would buy Premier now because uh, yes, you have the uh, previous FastPass rides, but if you buy the whole package, you know you can get in, and there's only a limited amount per day of those Premier passes. Yeah. So uh, and it's not like uh, in Disney World that you can say you have Lightning Lane. If you're already in a line, I say, oh, this takes too long. I'm gonna buy Lightning Lane, so the people who are already in line for uh, one attraction buy Lightning Lane in that lane, leave the lane, um, the queue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a lots of lanes, man. Lots of lanes, but they leave the queue to be disappointed by standing another couple of hours in the lightning, lightning lane, lane queue. queue yeah so you mean people that are in a regular queue who decide whilst they are in that regular queue to go to lightning lane and yeah. then again have to wait for a lot a long yeah. long time and that and merging those two queues is a, a hassle because both queues are uh, equally long or maybe even longer um 
whilst with the Premier Pass, yes, it's more expensive, but it makes that fewer people buy the ticket because it's more expensive. And even if they, even if they do buy it, there are only a limited amount of those tickets per day. Yeah, it's not like uh, during the day suddenly hundreds of other people decide to buy that uh, Premier Access as well. Yeah. Uh, and then there are actually not enough spots, slots for everybody to yeah. enjoy. And yeah. it makes it difficult for the cast members to yeah. fuse those two lines together. Yeah. Another thing that is uh, that we are used to in Disneyland Paris and what will probably be new in Walt Disney World, again speculation guys, we don't know this for sure, um, is the reservation system and then I'm talking about because everybody has a res reservation system so that is nothing new. However in Disneyland Paris if you buy uh, a day ticket uh, and then a dated ticket <laughs> yeah with a specific, specific date. date you don't need to make a reservation because so, they are already knowing that you're coming on that, that date. date yeah so that is something that we understood is not the case in Walt Disney World um, however if you are buying a ticket that is without a certain date or you have annual pass or you have any other kind of ticket then you do need to make a reservation yeah and that's and that is not actually fun. that is not fun and this is also what we would like to tell everybody like yes there are certain things that in Disneyland Paris are better than in Walt Disney World at the moment however it is not flawless at all there are so many things that are just so incredibly annoying that for for us Disneyland Paris fans yeah the how do you say it the enthusiasm is getting a little bit less because yeah. it is they are making it almost impossible for you to go to the park yeah. now i'm talking about the annual pass system in disneyland paris in particular um for example we want we are going to disneyland paris um in december yeah and that is a very very a uh, popular month to go to Disneyland because it's Christmas season and it is during the Christmas month so that is really really busy so you need to be um, yeah quick with your uh, yeah, reservations. reservations so what we did was in September we went also to Disneyland Paris but right after we returned we booked we made the reservations for our days in December. Yeah. If you are an annual pass holder in Disneyland Paris, you have only three days that you can make a reservation for in advance. Yeah. So if you would like to come for five days, you're just out of luck because uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> well, in, in that case, you have to be very uh, vigilant to make a three day reservation. And at the end of, of your first day, you have to be on your phone or laptop or computer to make another reservation yeah. for the consecutive mm. day. And exactly, that's but that's impossible in December because there are no slots. That's completely yeah. fully booked. So you're, you're just out of luck. If you would like to go to Disneyland Paris in December for five days with your annual pass, it's not going to happen. No. So we booked in, in September for three days for December. And that meant that we weren't able to go to, go to Disneyland Paris in October in November no. and not even in the September as well uh, the rest of the month was also out of question yeah. and we couldn't make any reservations for uh, for the rest of the year for, yeah, yeah for next year for 2023 yeah and this is so incredibly annoying because we pay quite a lot of money I think for uh, for our annual pass yeah and, I've got, uh, uh, and then you're not able to go and and that's when when we first got our annual passes we felt the freedom we were like oh my goodness i have this pass in my wallet and i we can go to disneyland paris every day if yeah, you want it, to it, this well, is amazing the it, freedom it, it happened but we were sitting on the couch on a friday yeah. evening. so well you know what let's go to bed early get in the car really early and go to disneyland paris yeah. on saturday morning exactly just like just like that yeah. and that that spontane, uh, spontaneously <laughs> way of thinking is completely out of the question. Mm. Um, so, um, like we said, this is just really, really annoying. Uh, and um, yeah, it's not, that's not what makes uh, the life of a Disney fan any uh, better, actually. No, no, absolutely not. Um, I, I understand why they did it just after the great unpleasantness, but and yeah, I still understand why they do it. I mean, if I were a company, I also would like to know where, how, how many people are coming to my park so I can, you know, adjust. However, there are a lot of 
if, if you think about it, they don't really need to make that many changes. No. All the rights need to be occupied with, with um, employees who, or cast members who, who um, uh, you know, yeah, um, operate, the, operate rights. the rights. Exactly. Yeah. All the restaurants need people. Yeah. Uh, that's just, you yeah. know, the way it is. So they don't really need to do that much. Um, but it takes away of the magic and I think that's one of the biggest, uh, well, we're, get, we're getting back to Mr. <coughs> JPEG. Um, he is a data driven guy and most of the companies that works, if you have data, if you have enough data and you have analysts who can correctly analyze the data, then you can plan ahead and, and work with that. But Disney and especially the Disney parks isn't about data. It's about emotions and about um, connecting with your fellow travelers into Disneyland. And um, it's an experience and it's not data. And I think um, JPEG made a big mistake in not understanding that. And uh, I've read an article that Iger even warned JPEG and the board of Disney way before uh, he left uh, and handed it over to JPEG. Yeah, but I also heard that th it was actually Bob uh, Iger who initiated uh, the reservation system in Genie Plus, for example. That's that's true. I, I, but I think that the execution of it was more uh, by JPEG. What I also see during um, the time that um, JPEG was in, was in charge, we also could see that a lot of the classical um, f uh, figures, you know, characters were slowly removed from the park and um, replaced. It's replaced by uh, the newer characters for, from example, Marvel or the latest yeah. Pixar movies. Now there is, um, and again, that's understandable because, uh, but, but yeah, it, takes it is away understandable because the younger people, you know, mm -hmm. they, they they want to attract younger folks, of, of course, and and the younger people they know those movies and they want to see those characters. It's fine. I also love those movies, but there there is a part of me that that says no, no, no. This this is not right. Disneyland too, too much Paris change is about the Disney characters. It's yeah. about Mickey, Minnie, Pluto, it's about the big five. And for example, Sven there now, you know that there are, we have a um, covered walkway from the, the car park to the, the mm -hmm. entrance of Disneyland Paris, almost. <laughs> and they replaced the, the roof, the roofing. Yeah. yeah. They also replaced the characters that were on top of that roof. You, we used to have Mickey and Minnie, uh, Chip, Chip and Dale, Dale. and now it's um, Iron Man and C-3PO. Oh, wow. Of course I love those, but I was looking at those characters and I was like, what is that for a little guy standing on it? I, I just, I, it was not, what a, it, it seems as if it was just a man standing on top of that. Uh, okay, you have to um, see the, this the, guy. The wind vane. I will put it, I will put a picture in, in uh, so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, the, the, the wind vane. If it's a wind fan, I don't know. It's just yeah. a little thing on top of the yeah. roof. Yeah, uh, ornament. An ornament. And I was like, no, no, no. This is this is not. This is what I mean. Yeah, but, but then again, it's it's always uh, changing, uh, evolving. But maybe it's uh, more now than it has been through all the years. There are more changes going on in these couple of years than over the whole yeah maybe but, but also like they are changing the whole disney disney hotel it's going to be a new theme i i'm also a little bit disappointed about that why why can't it just be a nice hotel from the time where walt disney when walt disney grew up yeah, and more it, in, yeah more why in does it have to be another theme about i don't know they're going to make the rooms uh, to characters every mm -hmm. room will be a different character well well, we can go on and on about this. And we will go on and on yeah. about this. We will continue this podcast for our patrons. If you would like to hear the rest of what we were talking about, you can go to uh, uh, the link down below. We, uh, you can become our patron. Um, it's from only one euro uh, a month. So we are not that uh, expensive, no. I guess. <laughs> um, so you can become a patron. We would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. And maybe next time we'll... See, See you in Main Street. Street. <laughs> Bye. Bye.